San Diego is ramping up social distancing enforcement to slow down the spread of the coronavirus by closing all parks, beaches and city trails. And if you do not comply, you could be slapped with a hefty fine or even face jail time. Thanks for joining us for this nightly check in. I'm Catherine Garcia. The enforcement comes after an influx of people took over the beaches, trails and parks over the weekend. San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner says officers will have the ability to issue a $1,000 fine for those who do not abide by the rules. The most extreme offense is six month jail time if you're caught in one of the closed areas and have already received a warning. It is simply irresponsible to congregate, and it's unfair to the rest of San Diegans who are staying at home. The impacts over some that made the wrong decision over the weekend increased the risk to other San Diegans. We have also learned the first San Diego firefighter has tested positive for coronavirus. Dozens more are under quarantine and four police officers are showing symptoms. There are now 230 cases in San Diego. That is up 25 from yesterday. There has been one death of a county resident. Earlier, county leaders announced the city of San Diego will use Golden Hall and the convention center as homeless shelters. Beds will be available at Golden Hall this week and soon they'll be available in parts of the convention center. The bridge shelters are being converted into screening and triage centers and the city has made hotel rooms available for people who need to be quarantined, including the homeless. Uh, as our testing continues to increase, we are anticipating a significant jump uh, in the coming weeks in the number of positive cases and we need to have those rooms available when that jump happens for individuals who cannot isolate at home. The county has set up hand washing stations in more than 200 locations to help those without easy access to a restroom. Public health nurses have also been sent to nine shelters across the county to observe the population and make sure people with symptoms are treated and isolated. Spring break begins for some school districts in San Diego County Monday today, but gone are any hopes of going back to school when the break is over on April 6th. The decision as to when to reopen all schools is being left at this point to local educators and public health officials. Some parents are concerned about how learning is going to take place after that and for the rest of the school year. We, when they're at elementary school, there's a teacher, there's a principal, there's a cook, there's a janitor, um, a yard duty. So I'm basically playing all those roles. A spokesperson for the Chula Vista School District says that district is working with the county and other districts to coordinate online learning, internet access, laptops for students who need them, as well as services for special needs students. Relief could soon be on the way for San Diego's small businesses, namely the thousands of bars and restaurants throughout the county hit hard by the coronavirus. County Supervisors Kristen Gaspar and Jim Desmond are calling on the rest of the board to take action to make sure that businesses can recover once it's all over. Tomorrow, they'll ask the board to defer all environmental health permitting fees and ask all county departments to look at their regulations and clear all possible barriers for businesses to reopen. Hundreds of Americans are stranded in Peru after the South American country closed its borders because of coronavirus. A college student from San Diego is among the groups of tourists trying to get home. Jared yeah. Petrie is from Rancho Penasquitos. He and his girlfriend both attend UC Santa Barbara. They were just wrapping up their study abroad trip when suddenly they were barred from leaving Peru. We got some really bad news that we might not leave until July. Um, and we've gotten some good news in hearing that in the last few days, American citizens have been able to fly back. The State Department says they are arranging charter flights to help Americans leave the country. Well, our more showers in store. Dagmar has your first alert forecast. Okay, so your Tuesday is shaping up to be a beautiful one. Take a look at some of these temperatures. Along those coastal zones, you will end up seeing about the low 60s, but you will be under partly to mostly cloudy skies. Inland valleys, you'll see about that mid-60 mark, one or two degrees warmer, and you've got a bit more sunshine in your forecast as well. Mountains still slightly on the chillier side, but you're just at around 50. That's pretty decent outdoors weather. You've also got some sunshine in the mix there. And the deserts, once again, just about perfect for you. You're in the low 70s under mostly sunny skies. We do have another chance of rain on the way for your Wednesday and Thursday. So my advice, get out there and enjoy this Tuesday. 
Well, it looks like the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics will be affected as well because of the crisis. An Olympic official told USA Today he believes the Olympic Games will be postponed. As concerns over COVID-19 continue, major Olympic powers are stressing the need to postpone the Games. This past weekend, American athletes called on Olympic officials to delay the Games. Canada says it will not send athletes to Tokyo unless the Games are pushed back. I know this is heartbreaking for so many people athletes, coaches, staff, and fans. But this was absolutely the right call, and everyone should follow their lead. Today, Japan's prime minister says postponing the Tokyo Olympics may be unavoidable, but canceling is not an option. That'll do it for our nightly check-in. Our Insight team is putting together weekly podcasts related to the coronavirus. Just search Insight NBC7 in the App Store and hit subscribe. Have a good night.